Hey everybody, Mayor Mark Bowton here. Thanks for joining us for a surprise at noon uh, moment to talk a little bit about uh, the state of the city and, and what uh, I'm up to. You know, um, really, uh, I was a little frustrated uh, the way things came out last night through the media, but not unexpected given that there's just so many people that are talking and things that happen. Um, so I want to spend just a few minutes with you uh, sharing a little bit about what Danbury, what's going to happen in Danbury and, and what, what I'll be up to. And then certainly I'll answer any questions. So if you have a question or concern, feel free to go ahead and, and type it in right now. Of course, the one, the only, t.obrien at danbury.ct.gov is with us. Taylor's here. Taylor, are you here? I'm here. Okay, so Taylor's here. Great job this morning. Thanks for the help with the speech, Taylor. We appreciate it. John Barney's here. He's still handling your constituent issues. And I, we got a special guy. Oh, Lisa Echetto is here with it. Lisa is here at e.echetto at danbury.ct.gov. <laughs> and she's wearing her mask. And uh, Kara Prunty, our Acting Director of Health at k.prunty at danbury.ct.gov is with us too. So we appreciate them being here. Uh, real quick, Kara, we're good? Okay, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> I know. Um, so I think probably the first thing that you all want to know is everybody heard the news. Um, you know, over the last several weeks, probably like six weeks or so, I've been thinking about, because once the uh, election is over, um, you have to start thinking about the next election, and that involves me. And I had to decide whether or not I was going to run or not, and I really reflected on it and thought about it. And I kind of made a decision not to run. And it really almost at the same time concurrently, um, Governor Lamont had made an entree and said, you know, are you interested? I'd love to have you on board. Do you want to do this? But he didn't know what I was thinking. And I told him, we went back and forth a lot about whether I was going to do this or not. And not that I didn't want to work for him. It's just I didn't know what I want to do in the future with my career. And so um, I think uh, Governor Lamont is a, a good, honest man. Um, certainly, we, we, you know, we have differences in policy views. Um, those aren't going to change for me. I'm still a Republican uh, when I uh, take this job. But, you know, he gave me the freedom to be me. And I think that's really important. He wasn't trying to put me into a mold of something I'm not. Um, he wants to hear divergent ideas and divergent thought. Doesn't mean he's going to take it, but he just wants to hear how other people sort of have what worldview they have. And so I respected that. Um, and I had to make a decision about whether I was going to run in 2021. So uh, the opportunity came up. It's a good opportunity for me. Uh, there's also, you know, a decision about do I want to run for mayor again? I think at some point, I wasn't worried about whether I could win or not. I felt confident I could win. Right, Taylor? Yeah. Um, our, we did some polling. Our polling is super, it's probably about the highest it's ever been. I think a lot of that's due to the pandemic. But um, so that wasn't really a question. It was more of um, is, you know, is there other, other opportunities for you? And so when this came up and we discussed it and I sat down with him on several occasions and he said, listen, I'm going to let you run your department. Um, I need you. The state needs you. Um, this is the right thing to do in a very heated time, I think, uh, in politics, not just in Connecticut, but across the country where, you know, a Republican and a Democrat work together for just the betterment of the residents. It's hard to say no to that. And so um, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, so what's going to happen? So I'll be here on Monday. We're doing Live at Five, right, Taylor? Of course. Are we talking we're Netflix on Monday night? I Monday, think we are. Okay. We'll talk about everything. All right. So I'll be here on Monday. Um, we have a lot of really good projects that are, are working on. There are some of those that are, all of those will be, you know, we'll continue working on those. Um, Joe Cavo is our council president. Joe will be sworn in on Thursday night. Uh, so um, we wish him well. I'll be working with Joe. And one of the conditions of me taking this job was that I would be allowed to kind of bounce back between the two positions. So uh, I'll be here to, to help him uh, to the extent that he wants my help or needs my help. And but I won't be undermining or in, interjecting myself into things. You know, Joe is the mayor and he will be the mayor. And um, I'll just be here to provide support and backstop for him and kind of fill him in on the institutional memory and knowledge. But so what are some of the good projects we are working on? I didn't really talk about a lot of those today, the state of the city speech, but things like the Danby Career Academy that I've worked very hard getting to the legislature this fall. And by the way, that was where some of these conversations sparked up. So. Um, you know, the governor saw how passionate I was about our children and about moving this forward and providing a, not just a, just an education, but providing an academic experience for them that is 
first in class, and that's really where uh, this all came from. So um, we've got that to work out. Uh, we've got some economic development projects that are coming. I haven't announced those today, but I will. One of them I did announce today was uh, the summit uh, leasing up 200,000 square foot of space to New Vance, the people who run and operate Danbury Hospital and a host of hospitals in, in Western Connecticut, Eastern New York. They'll have about f- not, hundreds of employees. It's, they don't want to commit to a number, but there will be a lot of employees, including their executive offices that will be at the summit. Um, so that is a huge chunk of that building. That's... Um, about a, not quite a quarter of the building, um, plus the apartments, plus the school. Uh, this is going to be really a virtual city uh, for uh, Danbury. That's, it's going to be very cool. Um, so those are the kinds of things that we're, we need to keep moving forward, and we're going to do that. I have called most of the department heads, not all of them. I do have to talk to our city council members, and I do want to thank all of our members of city council, led by Joe, Vanita Julio, Irving Fox, uh, you know, Warren Levy, uh, you know, list Jack Knapp, the list goes on and on of people that, you know, Colleen Stanley that have done great things for us. Um, and I want to thank the Democrats led by Paul Rotello because we really have operated on a, a, a plane where I think other communities should emulate. You know, you realize that I've been serving the city for, I'm in my 20th year. I've never missed a city council meeting. Never, not one. Never been done before. Um, but more importantly, we've never argued just for the sake of arguing. Sure, we've disagreed. I mean, that's part of, you can't have a body of 21 people that does agrees on everything. And that's okay, that's healthy. Uh, because good questions get asked when there's disagreements or different points of view. But we've always treated each other with respect. We've never had any fights or arguments. I mean, I've seen, I remember as a, as a resident of the city for the last 56 years, there were city councils where there are almost fisticuffs up on the dais over silly stuff. So I'm proud of that, uh, of setting the tone, setting the standard, and um, I'm proud of the job that's been done here by not just me but by everybody. I want to thank uh, P.J. Prunty for the work that he's done. Uh, It was great to see him start here as an intern, move up to an employee, bounce over to the city center, then go from city center to the chamber. That's a big deal, and um, that's a great career path. Um, I didn't know Kara, uh, uh, but I met her through P.J., um, went to the first uh, house opening and ate her food out of her refrigerator. Um, but uh, I have been incredibly impressed with Kara and what she does and the fact that she's leading this pandemic effort for us, along with Matt Kasavecchia, who's been a great help. Um, those two have just really stepped to the plate, and we're healthy and we're safe because of them. So with that, that's the story. Um, so uh, I'll be bouncing between the two places, but uh, Joe is will be the mayor, uh, effective, uh, I think, 5.30 on, we're shooting for around 5, 5.30 on Thursday night. He'll be sworn in. Um, I will be submitting a, a letter uh, saying that I'll be separating my employment from here and um, moving on. So with that, we got any questions, Taylor? Yeah. Kind of sad. Why is everybody I down? I... <laughs> Where's the jokes? <laughs> Well, speaking from the staff, you know, we're, we're proud of all of your accomplishments, too. And Do uh, I, where's my Dundee? You're, you will get the ultimate Dundee, obviously, all right, for, fine. Tw- for 20 years, you know. That's right, a big Dundee. Right. I want, the, white, I want the whitest Sam. sneakers Dundee. It's going to be the size of Uncle <laughs> Sam. We're going to put your Dundee right next to Uncle Sam. Tremendous. Um, okay, yes, this is an emotional day. So, Joe Cava, though, we do have a lot of people who know him here in the comments, but do you want to give any uh, background on him? Some yeah, people are sure. saying, you know, who's Joe? Tell yeah, Joe has been the council president since 2006. He's mm-hmm. been at my side for 14 years. Uh, Joe was um, uh, worked an employee of the city of Danbury for many years. Uh, he actually worked for the F- FD, for the fire department. I will have a biography out of him on Monday. Yeah. Um, he's prepared. He's ready to go. Um, he knows the city. He's filled in for me when I was sick. He's filled in for me when, um, you know, uh, things have gone on. Um, and he's been instrumental in a lot of our initiatives and in getting them done. And uh, um, we'll have to elect a new council president. That's part of this process. Um, it, this, the Republicans will elect a majority leader and they'll move up a um, somebody into the legislative leader spot. Will we still see you in Danbury? I am living right on Main Street. That won't change have uh, signed in a long, another lease at uh, Kennedy Flats. <laughs> yep. uh, so I will be commuting, um, but that's okay. Uh, you know, I'm gonna figure out, I, gotta, I need a dog sitter. So <laughs> anybody out there, please contact me because somebody's gotta go walk Ellie, I think during the day, but um, 
They uh, uh, right now they are doing Zoom meetings. Um, the offices are meeting on Wednesdays, and those are things that I have to do up there. But you know, uh, I'll be around. You'll see me around at restaurants, hanging out, and just doing the doing my thing. So technically, with your position, you're still going to be working for the residents of Danbury and the rest of the state. And somebody asked, what would your goals be as you move into this role as commissioner? Yeah, so I think, you know, there are, coming out of the pandemic, um, I, it's one thing that I don't think anybody has seen yet or really talked about because we're really fixated on how many new infections, God forbid, how many people have passed away, that kind of thing. The economic crisis that we're going to face is going to be the most difficult thing. And that's going to impact the state of Connecticut as well. So we're going to have to have a plan. And um, that's all driven a lot by OPM by the legislature and by the governor. It's not driven by the department that I'm heading up, which is really um, the Department of Revenue Services. We handle tax collection, we handle audits, we handle compliance, and then on the, the other side of that is um, uh, policy. So we'll be providing policy initiatives, thoughts and ideas to the governor and to legislature, but ultimately it's their choice and their decision. What I'd like to see us do is now, uh, obviously reduce the, the tax burden. That's going to be hard, though, I think, in the, in the near term. But if we could put ourselves on the path in the long term uh, to lowering just a shade our tax burden, if we can put on the path in the long term, being able to keep our retirees in Connecticut and have them stop leaving to Florida and to places south, um, I think that would be some good goals for us, right? Connecticut is a beautiful state. It's got great bones. I mean, you can't, the four seasons are gorgeous. And, you know, you, just when you're so sick of winter, spring pops up. And when you're ready for summer, that nice hot day pops up. And then when you're ready, sick of summer, you get fall. So we need to leverage that. I, I think we can. Um, but um, these are will be the visions and the ideas of the governor first. And I'll provide, I have already been providing uh, guidance that I can. Um, he gets advice from a lot of people. I'm one of the calls he makes. I'm honored for that. Um, because I think he cares. And I, I think that's made the difference, too. You know, there are other governors, I'm not going to name who, that I would not work for. And um, But I think that uh, Governor Lamont is doing the best he can in very trying circumstances. Great. Um, now, the question that uh, I think we have about 10, 10 times this was asked, what about live and fun? What are we going to do, oh, Taylor? My oh, God. my God. Oh, live and fun. Um, it just feels like my life now. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, planning and <laughs> Planning that show every Monday and Thursday it takes up staff time, but um, we we're—I don't know. I mean, we got to think about that. We're going to be on Monday, right? We have um, a few more shows, right? Right. We'll, we'll be on Monday. Monday yes. Thursday. I guess Thursday. Well, come sure. on. All right. We're going to bring on a special guest. His name's Joe Cabo. On okay. Thursday. Maybe we'll we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll pass the uh, gavel to Joe on on uh, Thursday. Um, all in all, yes, we, we, this won't But we, you and I have, let's be honest, we have talked about a podcast. We've yes. talked about, um. I think if Live at Five is continuing, it will be with you. Uh, it just won't be in this. And it'll be capacity. nothing. It'll be nothing political. Yes. It'll be nothing, um, related. You know, we could talk about Danbury in general, about, you know, things that are happening, businesses. We can highlight businesses. We can do all that That's stuff. Right. I don't think the governor would be upset about that. Maybe we'd come on as a guest a couple more times for us. I think that we have to, you know, I just have to be careful that one of the problems, one of the things I have to be is apolitical. So uh, when you come into the office that I'm going to be the commissioner of, um, you can't worry if you're an active Democrat and I'm a Republican that you're not going to get treated fairly, right? And if you're a Republican, uh, you, you, you know, I have to be objective. Uh, you know, you don't want to know if there's a Democrat in the chair, you're like, hey, you know, I'm going to get this guy's not going to, or gal's not going to treat me right. So I can be really careful to make sure that people know I'm objective. Because in the end, some of these decisions, particularly about audits and compliance and things like that, end up on my desk and I have to make them. So i got to be careful about that. Notwithstanding that, there is stuff I love talking about. You cannot take the Netflix out of me. Of you cannot take the foodie, the terrible foodie. And everybody in this office knows that when they... Oh, your food choices. When you, be a whole episode when you order for me, about. what do you do, John? You order for a third grader, right? That's basically <laughs> cheeseburger, <laughs> chicken, chicken nuggets... nuggets. Um, uh, chicken spaghetti fingers, from, spaghettis, <laughs> spaghetti from, uh, from Mina's Carne. Mina's Carne. The mayor gets spaghetti. Right. Um, pizza from the uh, China Chinese buffet. buffet. <laughs> right. Oh my God, you do I love their pizza. It's tremendous. <laughs> so um, these are the things that yes, we've we got to figure out a way to continue talking. to talking about. Yes. We have had an offer from NBC to pick up our show. 
um, we're deciding whether or not we want to do that. So, no, I'm just kidding. We're Actually, gonna... HBO. It's going to be right after Don Oliver. Right after Don Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I, I just won't be able to answer questions like, you know, when is DMV open? Or, you know, we can provide, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can provide information that's in the public domain to you. But, um, and Amanda can probably still log in and, <laughs> you know, we'll we'll talk to Mayor Cavill about that sure. and see what he says. And that said, um, you can head over and follow the city of Danbury if you're not already. Uh, that's where information will be coming out uh, in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, I probably will be locking the mayor mark. Well, we got to change your name here. It'll be ex mayor mark. Ex mayor mark. Yeah, um, <laughs> but I'm still the mayor till next Thursday, so yes. I'm going to leave it the way it is. But over not this weekend, but the following weekend, yes. I'll be locking down all that stuff. You're probably dumping off a lot of social media. I think I'll still do Instagram, and that's it. Because and I have to do Twitter. Yeah, but, it, but again, it's gonna. I'm Twitter. gonna lose follow followers like crazy. Yeah, but I guess. Followers. Yeah, I guess I could use it to put out exciting stuff that we're doing at the Department of Revenue Services, like Commission. tax bills are due, yeah. and you know, things like that. <laughs> How exciting! I mean, it, it will be inspiring. Riveting. 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 Um, so uh, I'll have to think about all that. Um, but you know, the, and I'm sure there's a social media policy that the state runs and I have to be respectful of that as yeah. well. So what else you got? Any other questions? I think, I think we're good. A lot of thank yous, a lot of, what did I miss? Start it over. This will be on. Yeah. The look, I'm not going <laughs> to, I look, I'm sad. I'm, I'm not, I, you know, I, I, the news time said I broke down. I think that's a little It was fun. over the top, but I was, <laughs> I was upset and, um, you know, because it's 20 years of your life. It's a long time. And so uh, you meet so many people and you do so many things and um, there's so many highs and so many lows. And uh, uh, look, you make mistakes. I've made mistakes. I've screwed things up. I've always tried to correct them and make them right. Um, uh, and uh, I don't know. It's just, a, it's a great job. You know, like, like I said in my speech today, my mother told me, she always said, listen, if you want to be successful, do what you love and figure out a way to get paid for it. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It just If you're getting paid to do something you love, you're successful. That's my mother's, that was my mother's definition of success. And I really tried to follow that. So I've been able to be paid to do what I love for 20 years. That is an incredible achievement. Never missed a council meeting. Never. And uh, to that end, there are people that allowed me to do that, and that's my family. And I want to thank them. I want to thank my Uncle Dick and Aunt Marcy. They're Bethelites, Bethel residents, but uh, they're like a mother and father to me since my mom and dad had passed on. And um, they're like biggest cheerleaders. They come to everything. They, you know, they're always there for me. Aunt Marcy does get upset about the tennis courts down at the um, Rogers Park. And I'm like, okay, but you live in Bethel and you're in a tennis court. <laughs> but, um, you know, she's so thrilled with the uh, renovations that went on there. And, um uh, you know, you know they do get approached. I mean, there, there's a burden that they have to carry with this job. They'll get approached in the grocery store. Well, I want this job, or, or or why haven't you paid my street or whatever? And you know, it's it's been a burden. And not necessarily that they don't get the highs and lows that I get, but it's been you know something that they've had to do. So I want to thank them for stuffing envelopes and being there. And of course, the staff here has been outstanding. And uh, over the years, I've been so blessed for with so many great staff people. I'm very particularly proud of the young people that I've mentored that have moved on to great things and, and other parts. I mean, um, I've have a, I have at least I have one campaign manager that's state of Massachusetts budget director. Yeah, I have a finance director who worked under me for five years, who is the county executive for SARMAC, which is Charlotte, North Carolina, and Mecklenburg County. It's a combined job. It's, go watch her on TV. She was fantastic, by the way, brilliant woman. Um, I've been able to meet with people and mentor people, and those those are connections that have stayed on for the rest of my life. They, they text me even today. Um, we always have that contest about who was the best intern. PJ was right there. Was he, not right? he was there. Intern. I wasn't here when he was an intern. I can't. He, I do have his office. He was so. huge. That's why I hired him full time because yes. he was good. Um, and there were other people. You know, I always thought uh, a friend of PJ, yeah. who helped out a little bit uh, in the office, was Tommy Plummer, mm -hmm. who's now down in the Carolina somewhere. Uh, Danbury guy though. His father's still in Danbury. Um, Tommy, I always thought, was a pretty good intern. I don't think he was as good as PJ, but he was good. <laughs> I thought he could have had a career in, in public service if he wanted that. Um, we'll let PJ take the gold medal. Look, I, I, I'm going to think we're going to give it to PJ. All right. um, <laughs> I would like to challenge that. Oh, now, Alisa let me finish. Let me finish. Alisa. Let me finish. 
Elisa, at that time her name was Munoz, who is now Elisa Echero, um, who was also my uh, executive, <laughs> executive assistant, excellent intern, very responsible, John Barney, shaky. Okay, intern. Shaky, okay. okay. And we know the one we don't speak of was the best intern of all time. <laughs> But he has been DQ'd. We have to disqualify him. <laughs> so good, right, Elisa? Yeah, keep moving he was on. so good. Keep moving on. But it all fits. It checks out because he was that good. Um, let's talk about, before we hang up here, let's talk about the best employee. Now, I'm going to, I'm a direct employee person, okay? okay? All right. Person who wore the best vest. He gets a Dundee for best vest. Are you going to give this to the one, the only? Steve Nocera. Steve Nocera. There's no He's question. On. He's listening right now. Yeah. Steve made the best cappuccino. Steve, best cappuccino, best best. Steve specialized in a George Costanza kind of role of doing nothing but doing a lot. However, when I really yelled at him to do something, it got done. He, he and, and Steve Nocera is brilliant. So anybody that hires him would be happy to have um, uh, Let's see, who else? Uh, Mark Dillon, yes. a.k.a. De Leon. De Leon. Yep, very good. Salad, salad, everything salad. salad. Everything salad. He's You're salad. Here. Salad here. speech, yep. Fair enough. Uh, Chief of Staff, uh, you were here for all of them. Mm-hmm. Mike McLaughlin, salad. Yes. He, uh, Wayne, Wayne Shepherd. salad. salad. Mm-hmm. And Dino, salad. salad. Yeah. Interesting enough, each of them brought different skill set. Yeah. Would you agree? I agree. Right? Mike was a very policy-driven person, loved policy. Um, Wayne was more of a consensus builder, yeah. uh, and uh, Dino has a lot of emotional intelligence. Dino can get things done. If we say, we want this moved, it's moved not today, but yesterday. Um, each person kind of brought that talent to, to the job. And then what happened is we would all fill in the different parts of the role um, to do that. Um, Taylor, she's been unique. Uh, she's, been, she's been interesting. <laughs> she's been okay. Right, uh, um, Ted Kasumpis, Teddy. Oh, uh, right, Peach. Oh, uh, Karen, no, Karen, Karen, oh, Karen. 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 Sorry, sorry, Karen. I called, I called Kara PJ. Um, <laughs> sorry, Kara, uh, but Karen knew Teddy. Yes, great. You went to his, de- didn't you go to his um, deli, Elm Street Market? Yep, yeah. great. Okay, it's it's tremendous. Oh, he wants to change the mayor mark to the ex mayor mark. What is Caper Stew going to do? Capers, too, if you are listening. Um, X Mayor Mark is a real good title for a sandwich. Yeah. I mean, there's multiple out there. And captains, Captain they don't have a mayor mark. They just have the mayor. Have. They have the mayor. Oh, the mayor. The mayor. The, the commish. Yeah, the, the maybe mayor. change it to the commish. The commish. Um, I got some two, two good questions in here. Okay, go ahead. Oh, right. Jessica Soriano. Uh, Elisa, what a hoot she was, right? Yes. Was that girl funny? Mm-hmm. Thin as around. Could she eat? <laughs> She would inhale. You, if you brought a large pizza, it was gone in 10 minutes. And then she'd be like, Mayor, I'm hungry. Remember? Love Jessica. Oh, very passionate. She, and she left to go to New Jersey to get a PhD. You know, so she, you know, she definitely, what, what do you got? What's your, two good questions. All right. Number one. Will you let the kids know about the snow days? You got to show up for that. Unfortunately. Let me talk to Dr. Sale. I might be able to work something out with Dr. Sale. <laughs> I got another, again, somebody else just said it. Too. Again, <laughs> as long as as long as long Mayor Joe doesn't mind. Okay. If, if, if you want me to make a Twitter account just for snow days, and it could be you, oh Joe, no. we could all feed it in. Oh, no. Don't you dare. How right. dare you? Who do you think you are? Hogwarts is closed this morning. Hogwarts is closed Those this morning. Those are my morning. favorite. I Rydell High School. When I was in high school. No, when I was in Buddy high school. Buddy Cianci Junior High. Hysterical. Let's see. What else? What other like schools? I question. Yeah. Okay. But Dylan High School. Yeah. This is going to be hard. You have to pick one. All right. Favorite. Favorite, favorite, favorite memory in the past 20 years as mayor of the city of Danbury. Can you pick one? I have a lot of them. Nope. But one that right... <laughs> it's hard because I, I, in my mind I sort of categorize them into, okay, here's my people memories. Yeah. Here's my project memories. Um I think cutting the ribbon on a new police station was big, only because there was so much negativity. Oh, it'll never get done. Um, I think I'll always take with me the absolute near fisticuff fights I had with Antonio over the last 20 years. Um, and the funny part is, we will almost scream at each other. I'll throw my shoe at him, 
And then five minutes later, we'll walk into a meeting and, and we got each other's back and we're best friends. And so whatever we figured out, built consensus on, that was what we were going with. Tell them who Antonio is. Uh, Antonio is our director of public works. Um, there was two times um, that I, I did three things I did, and I'm not blowing my own horn, but you asked. So one was, <laughs> well, like, you know, we, I just read about me potentially maybe a snowstorm next week, so I'm thinking about that. We had opened the War Memorial, and I was going to the War Memorial with Paul Estefan, who was our emergency management director back then. This is back in the late 2000s. And I parked the car, and I got out, and I was walking up, and I found a woman in the snow pile who was unconscious. And it was close to hypothermia or had hypothermia. And she was walking because that was our shelter, emergency shelter. And she was walking there and she couldn't make it because it's how hard it was snowing. It was crazy. And I remember pulling her out and carrying her into the um, uh, War Memorial. Um, there was another woman one day, elderly woman, who got blocked in by the guy across the street, Snow. And I must have asked our public works was very busy that day plowing. And so I had asked him a couple of times and she kept calling me. And I just said, that's it. I grabbed my green pickup truck and a shovel. And I went over and spent an hour and a half shoveling out her, her sidewalk and her walkway up to her house. And she was so appreciative. She cried and gave me hot chocolate. And I thought that was like the coolest thing. And um, those are probably two of the biggest memories. And you know, also the people who went to extraordinary lengths to support me, um, who, you know, I, uh, I had a young lady last, a year ago, empty her piggy bank for a campaign donation. Um, and she was six years old. Aww. And uh, things like that you always take with you. Always. Aww. Okay. And then there's the projects. Yeah. Well, favorite project? Um, okay. Here's a, let me just break this down for you. And just a little observations, and then we'll wrap this up. Uh, open a dog park, you're going to get 250 people to show up on ribbon cutting. <laughs> yep. um, budget hearing, you're going to get five. Um, you spend $250 million, you get five people. You open a dog park for 50 dogs and you get 300 people. Uh, John Oliver, you want to rename the sewer plant after John Oliver? 500 people write into the city council. Figure out a way to write a letter, which is hard to do, to email Taylor. So I have to read all these letters. And uh, 500 people do this. And um, again, five people show up for a budget hearing. That doesn't mean we take advantage of that. We, 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 I think we've been thoughtful. Two straight years of no tax increase is pretty darn good. But I think we've been thoughtful about how we d deploy our dollars. Um, so that, that just is ironic. It just makes me yeah. juggle. City Council, my first term, argued one night probably an hour and a half over – a $2,200 expenditure. The next item on the agenda, no exaggeration, because they were so tired from arguing over the first expenditure, was $22 million sewer extension that I mentioned this morning, went through unanimously without even a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Never fails. Yep. Um, so those are good things. Um, those, and those are fun things. And uh, um, you know, and you know, and the city employees. I don't know if I talked about them enough, but all the stuff that they do. You know, I've been in other city halls, in other mostly city halls, and people are miserable. They're cranky. The people around here are engaged, energetic, helpful. Yeah, you know, people, you know, not everything goes perfectly the way somebody wants, but they do try, and um, um, they're always trying to do. And, and while perfection is always something you chase in this business, yeah. um, we've done some really darn good things. So I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Because I don't want to get emotional and all gooey and everything. So um, thanks, everybody. Appreciate it, John, Taylor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Kara, Elisa, appreciate all you've done. And um, we'll be back on Monday, right? Monday. We're going to be worry. jovial. We're going to be jovial on Monday. Jovial Monday at 5. All right. I'll have all my Netflix reviews. Yeah, we might have a little fun. <laughs> all right. Thank God bless you, everybody. Talk soon.